All right, everybody, welcome to our broadcast tonight. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about organization for you guys who are doing drop shipping on eBay and uh, just generally keeping organized. I get questions time and time again about, you know, if, if the idea here is to build an eBay business with hundreds, if not thousands of actively listed and managed items, how do you keep organized? How do you how do you know which ones belong to which suppliers? And and how do you keep track of price changes and out of stock issues? And overall, how do you just keep your head on straight when you're trying to manage such a big group of listings? Uh, which by the way, should be your goal. If you're just starting at this and you only have 10, 15, 20, maybe 50, 100 listings, uh, this isn't as crucial. But w as you grow this and as you scale it, You'll see shortly that if you don't have some kind of organization in place um, and, and some systems in place, you're going to find yourself uh, just running out of stock more than you'd like to or uh, making sales and then not remembering which supplier uh, that sale belonged to, so on and so forth. So I want to take just a few minutes and discuss that. I think it's an important topic. Um, and the first thing I want to just suggest is that there's not a right way to do this. Some of you guys are very organized and, and others of you are not. Some of you guys are, are, are great at keeping digital notes. Other, others keep things on a physical pad of paper. Um, I don't think there's a right answer for this and I don't want this to be a challenge for you if you're not good with the computer generally. It's just fine to keep a hard copy of notes of where you're getting your listings. Okay, so let's, in fact, let's just take a few notes while we're working on this right now. Um, I'm going to bring up this right here. This is, uh, this is uh, Google Docs. Some of you guys are aware of this program. This is a free program. You go to, you go to google.com slash docs, and you can open up a word processor online that is saved in the cloud. And what that means is whatever I do here on this document, it saves it to my Google account. And wherever I log into my Google account, no matter if I'm here in my office, I'm at home, or I'm on a, a phone on vacation or on a different computer at my in-laws on vacation, whatever the case may be, I can always access this document. It's in the cloud. And that's just a fancy way of saying it's always available as long as I can get onto the internet, which is kind of cool. So we're going to talk about Google Docs, but I want to use this Google Doc right now to take some notes. And uh, let's, let's do that to start. Let me zoom in just a little bit for you. Okay, so I'm just going to call this uh, staying organized with your drop shipping eBay business. Okay, that's what we'll call this tonight. Um, and we already identified the problem, right? The, the goal here is uh, we want, I'm going to say we want a huge number of listings, right? You know, 500 to 5,000 listings. Yes, I mean, that many, right? If, I mean, that's not a problem necessarily. That's a good thing, right? If you guys have that many listings, we ought to be making sales on a regular basis. The problem is, um, and, and this is what I really should write here, or, or what I should write here. Um, I'm going to say it's difficult to stay organized when you have that many listings to manage. Okay, that's the problem. So here, let's just. I mean, I'm just going to offer some general solutions. Okay, and and if you have some things that you do for your eBay business, feel free to share. I mean, I, I don't pretend to have all the right answers, especially as it relates to being organized. Um, you, you, can, you can ask my wife about that, right? She knows I'm not the most organized person in the world. But I do have a few things that I do here that I think will be helpful. Okay, here's number one. And this solves a, a very specific problem. One of the problems with having uh, too many listings is sometimes you lose track of who your suppliers are. Uh, likely, if you have 1,500 listings, you may also be getting those listings from eight different places or eight different suppliers. So 
the question I get then from my clients is, okay, well, how do I organize a, a, a way or a system here that I can know that when I make a sale, I know where, where the item came from? And uh, here's, here's one solution you could consider, okay? Um, in your listing, and I'm gonna say in the description specifically, create your own product code. Okay, and here's what I mean by that. So let's pretend for a second, if you're looking at my screen, uh, we're selling these uh, Nike shoes right here, okay? And, uh, and they're coming from Amazon. That's, that's my supplier in this case. Well, I'm over here creating my listing on eBay, and here I'm to the item description. We're going to just assume really quickly that I've gone through the other stuff, like I've written the title, and I've put in a condition, and um, added photos, and I've done item specifics, and I'm right here at the, at the item description, okay? Well, likely, I'll probably just copy their description um, of this shoe. Let's see if I can find a description of the shoe here. Um, the, here's the product description right here, okay? I'm going to copy that and paste it in. All right, there's my product description, okay? Uh, after I've written my product description, I'm going to write something like this, okay, at the bottom of that product description. Now, what does that mean right there, AMZ-9389341? Well, it means nothing, right? A, a customer's not going to know what that is. It looks like a, a part number or a, a, a SKU number. Maybe it's a, a UPC to some people. Nobody's going to really notice that or, or pay much mind to it. It just looks like an item number. Um, so the number doesn't mean anything, but for me, the AMZ does. And you might think, well, that's too obvious. Maybe somebody might think that's Amazon. Well, maybe, but probably not. And if you're really concerned about that, you could have your own separate code. And, and for Amazon, it could be, you know, 6TJ like that, right? And that could be your Amazon code. Whatever the case may be, you put that code in here. And then when you sell the item and you look at the item once it's sold, you can see here in the description that it came from Amazon because it fits this little code that you put in there. So you can have... 1500 listings on eBay and then as long as you've coded everything correctly here in your descriptions you'll always know where the item came from okay now that's that's a really simplistic way to do it um, if you're really good at just using the internet a lot of times it's it's even easier than that if you know you sold this particular shoe and you're using these keywords in your title so as I'm creating the listing you know, likely my title is going to have this in it, but I, I mean, I'm sure I have, I'm going to have other, uh, you know, pieces to that that I'm going to add, but I know this is my, my product title right here. I can copy that and I can do a search online and find it and, and maybe find it from my vendor just by doing a search. Um, so you can do it that way if you want to. And I, I've had clients that have managed their eBay business that way, but if you want to be very specific and, and I know this came from Amazon and I found it on Amazon and and I base my price around the Amazon price using this little code that I just showed you is uh, is a pretty good option, okay? So that could be one thing you do. Um, another solution to this problem of maybe not being able to, to find where your item is or, or know where it came from originally um, is to create a separate document. To, to track all of your listings. Okay, now that document could be on a Google Doc like this. Okay, so uh, you could, I mean, you could easily create something very simple on a word processor doc like this, and uh, and and it would go anywhere with you, right? I'm not. This isn't a lesson on the cloud and Google Docs. So if you're not really familiar with that, we'll we'll point you in a different direction, but. For now, just keep it. You could keep a record of every time you create a listing. So you create your listing on eBay, and then you come over here to your doc, and you say, you know, today is one nine, two thousand eighteen, and uh, you know, I listed. We'll say number one, and then I can copy and paste this item, the title of it, right? And then I could even, and this is this is a good idea too, I could copy 
this whole URL up here at the top and I could paste it here so that I know that that's where I got the item and I could easily, if I sell the item, refer back to my document here and highlight this URL and go, right? I could even make a note of the price. So this is a $77 item right here, right? 77, okay. You, I mean, you can track as much information as you feel like you want to. Um, you can be as organized or as unorganized as you'd like. But remember, the, the big picture here is the whole reason why we're talking about organization is we're trying to mitigate time that it takes you to fulfill orders. If you're getting a lot of sales that are coming in, you want to make sure that when you go to fulfill those orders, they're in stock, they're at the right price, and they're easy to find and order. And, and I think this system makes that easier if you create another document outside of this. Now, you don't have to do this online. Um, if you're more of a, an old-fashioned, I, like I like to write everything down type of person, uh, pull out a notebook and, and have a running log of all of your listings. Some of you guys are better at that than doing stuff digitally like that, and that's fine too. I don't really care what your method is, and I guess I should probably add what I just suge suggested there as a solution. What we're going to say this is a number two is a digital um, document, but I'm going to say create a hard copy, you know, like a notebook, and that's uh, and that's a physical type thing that you can do. Okay, I, again, I don't care what it is. You, you, I mean, I get asked all the time, well, what's the best method? Well, you know, are you good on a computer or not good on a computer? Are you more efficient at just writing things down and staying organized in a notebook, or are you better with keeping that stuff in the cloud online? Uh, that's that's just a decision you've got to make. But here's what this does for you. If you stay organized like this, it, it's it's going to fix some things for you. One, it's going to it's going to speed up fulfillment, which is important. You may not think that's a big deal right now with 30 listings and you're only closing a sale, you know, once a week right now. So that's no big deal. It's easy for you to find the item, and you probably even remember when you're when you've only got 30 listings. You remember where you list you you got that item from, and and you can easily go find it and fulfill on it. But multiply that by a thousand, and you've got 3,000 listings, and you make a sale, and you're looking at it like, oh, well, maybe I listed this eight weeks ago, but I have no idea where this came from, and, and how to fulfill on it. Well, if if you've put one of these methods in place right here. That's going to be easy. Either check your listing description for the code that you created. That way you know it came from Amazon or Target or from some other wholesale drop shipper. Right? That's an option. Check your digital Google Doc and, and do a quick search on that doc and find it. Or check your hard copy. Now, the other type of Google Doc that's nice that I really like is, is using a what's called a Google Spreadsheet. And this keeps things, in my opinion, even more organized. And you can formulate this spreadsheet how you want if you're comfortable with this type of thing. But you could put date here, product name here, um, price, supplier, right? You can create these headings here. And then as you're listing your items on eBay, you can also just update this. So today's, you know, 1918, product name is uh and copy and paste this in right here okay price was 77 dollars supplier is amazon and then i could even put like you know my price i'm going to be selling this for you know we'll say 97.99 on ebay and you could even say you know my profit you could you could you could calculate in your your profit and and really take this way beyond some of you guys that are in accounting or finance or um, you've done some teaching or otherwise you just know spreadsheets really well you can create kind of an elaborate spreadsheet that does a lot of calculations for you i'm not that's beyond the scope of what we're going to be talking about tonight but suffice it to say spreadsheets are nice nice because they keep everything really well organized and so when I close that sale and I get that email from eBay saying, hey, you, you sold these blue Nike shoes, 
I can say, okay, well, this is easy. I'm going to hop onto my spreadsheet here and I'm going to look those up and, uh, and boom, I know that they came from Amazon. I see the price that I'm supposed to get them for. Um, and, and you can quickly go over and, and order the item. This is all in the name of efficiency and speed, uh, because really that's what running one of these eBay businesses is, is about in the end, because it's such a volume strategy and we're building such a big business entity on, on eBay. You need to be able to keep this stuff organized. Um, the other thing that I think this could help with is um, if, if you're struggling with out of stock issues. Now in, in drop shipping, uh, you're, you're going to have out of stock issues. That's that's what I would call just the cost of doing business. If you're in the drop shipping business, you don't have total control of your inventory. You're forfeiting that right. Okay, you're you're leaving inventory control to your partner, whether it be a retail depart, uh, partner or a um, you know a wholesale type partner. Their their job is to handle the inventory. Your job is to sell the product, and, and a lot of times they're not the best at letting you know what's in and out of stock. And so as a general rule, this is the advice I'll give you. If you're staying organized and you have a nice little document like this, you can put it on your calendar that you're going to check availability of your products, you know, we'll say for now, once a month, right? If you're, if you're early in the game and you don't have a lot of listings, I'm going to encourage you to check them a little more often because I want to mitigate the number of out of stock issues we have uh, early in your eBay business because that can that can leave a scar on you and your account when you're trying to establish yourself and 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 build credibility and establish some rapport in the eBay community. You don't want to go out of stock a whole lot at the start. Uh, it's bound to happen and it will happen on a dropship business, um, but I I don't want it to happen too much at the start. So. Uh, if you do create a document like this, I would encourage you to, to mark your calendar once a week or a couple times a week and check very quickly that everything's in stock. Now, a lot of you will say to me, well, what happens later on when I've got 1,500 listings going? Well, there's other methods. We've got some tools and some software that we can potentially use to help uh, make that process a little bit easier. Um, but what I will say is as long as you're using good suppliers and periodically you're checking your inventory levels, maybe once a month, and, and certainly if you're not listing sale items all the time, some of you guys get the idea that you want to list sale items, which, which is fine, but the problem with sale items is that they tend to go out of stock a little more often or the price is subject to change a little more often, um, so you may need to adjust that price on your eBay listing as they adjust their price. Um, the bottom line is we want to use these documents to mitigate those issues. And so set a schedule, maybe talk to your coach about how often you should be checking the availability and the pricing of your items. Um, later on, when you're managing a ton of items, you know, you can, there, there's, there's things you can do and we can discuss that in another training, but this is geared towards you guys that, uh, you know, you're managing a few items enough to merit you organizing yourself, but but maybe not you know five thousand items. If, if you're if you're managing that many, then we'll have another discussion about what your options are, um, because at that point you're closing multiple sales every single day, and when you're running your business like that, you can't really afford to be out of stock all that often. It's going to happen. eBay's got a rate that they say you need to stay under, and in most cases it's in the high 90s. So you need be, you need to be fulfilling on you know nine ninety plus percent of your transactions you can't be running out of stock or refunding all the time that can end up hurting your account so anyway i mean there's a lot to talk about as it relates to organization but i want you to take just the few tips that we gave you tonight and uh, take them to heart and consider organizing yourself a little bit better as you're doing your your uh, drop shipping business and i think in the end while it might create a little more work for you up front i think it's going to yield um just more efficiency for you in your business in the long term and I think that can make a big difference so anyway I hope that helps for you get you guys if you've got any questions please leave them in the comments there I'm going to go ahead and shut off the recording um, if you're watching this recorded thanks for being here we're we're glad you tagged along